This is the KBIT2 revised video series. I'm Tina Eichstedt, Senior Product Manager at Pearson. Today's episode, I'm excited to have back Dr. Alan Kaufman, of course, uh, lead author of the KBIT2 revised. And Dr. Kaufman, our question today centers around gifted and talented assessment. How do you see the KBIT2 revised supporting gifted and talented assessment needs? Well, the KBIT and the KBIT2 for years have been used effectively for gifted assessment. The KBIT-2 revised absolutely will have an important role in gifted assessment. And, and I think it is even a little bit better for that purpose because in the revision, we were thinking about gifted children and adolescents when we added items at the difficult end two hard riddles items, five difficult matrices items to make sure that we really can tap the upper reaches of the gifted intelligence. Um, the KBIT2 also has as an advantage the fact, apart from being brief and apart from the fact, importantly, it can be given via teleassessment validly and reliably, it also has two different subtests in the verbal scale. One, a traditional picture vocabulary type test, but the other, riddles, is not just what do you know, but can you think about what you know? So there's some kind of fluid reasoning, both in verbal and in nonverbal, and that is really the essence of the gifted and talented intelligence, but don't use the KBIT2 revised alone. It's something that happens all the time, more in some school districts and states and others, but giftedness is a complicated, complex, very important variable to define correctly. And even the way IQ has been used, whether it's KBIT2 revised or WISC-5 or Woodcock-Johnson or KBC2 normative update. IQ is not enough and you shouldn't just use a cutoff, 130, 120, because errors of measurement are telling us no IQ test is accurate enough that you can say 127, you don't belong. 134, you do. It's just not that accurate even a long test, and it's not enough. We need to think, what about achievement? Do we want this high scoring child or adolescent also to be a good reader? That's part of the definition and schools and teachers differ on that. And academics is not enough. What about creativity? Do they have some kind of originality, flexibility, that it's maybe hard to measure, but it can be measured, even if you get the opinions of parents and teachers, or come up with all sorts of informal tasks that our son James, professor at University of Connecticut, has done a huge amount of research. And he and his colleagues can tell you, this is how you can get some information about creativity, and also you want other people's input. Steve Pfeiffer has a wonderful instrument, the gifted rating scales that will evaluate giftedness in six different areas. So I think KBIT2 revised, great for gifted assessment, but use it as part of a battery. That's such good counsel, Dr. Kaufman. Thank you so much for your insights. And your expanded context on the area of gifted assessment. For those of you watching, more to come on this KBIT2 revised video series. Thanks again for watching today. Have a great day.